Hey everybody, what's going on? We are here in Chinatown a few days before Chinese New Year. But by the time you're watching this video, Chinese New Year will probably be over. But nonetheless, we're here to test the camera out that I've been playing with for the past few weeks that I've been waiting for months to get my hands on. We finally have it. We're taking it out of its comfort zone to talk about it. Here we are with the Fujifilm GFX 100. That's right, 102 megapixel medium format camera in Chinatown at night. How does this perform? We're gonna talk all about that. We're gonna talk about the photography aspect, video aspect, different lenses. So without further ado, let's get down to it. So you might be wondering where the GFX 100 is at. Well, actually Kai Hong is using it to record me right now. Basically the first portion of this video has been shot on the GFX 100, 4K at 25 frames per second, handheld using IBIS. And then we got eye tracking on this. So this is more of a world world test of what it's like to track me walking through these streets of Chinatown with all these people around me. So if I go in and out of focus, that's just how it is. Now, of course, you can adjust the tracking uh, sensitivity on it, and there's a lot of different settings you can do on that. We've tried our best, but it's about a review. It's about testing the camera out in real-world situations, so here we go. Let's talk about the GFX100, because this is a very unique medium format system. The fact that we're even shooting 4K handheld like this is a first. I mean, you don't see it on a medium format camera system at this capacity at this price point either. And then on top of that, the form factor of the GFX100 is about the size of a Canon 1DX Mark II or a Nikon D5 or even the Sony A7R4 that I have with me with the external battery grip. It's not much bigger than that or it's the same size. And that's pretty astounding to have IBIS, two batteries, 102 megapixel medium format sensor inside of this, all in this package. It's a game changer of a camera. And I think in some ways it's ahead of its time. And in some ways, it's gonna change the way that we use medium format as a whole. But anyway, let's talk about the design of the GFX because the design is different than other Fujifilm cameras on the market. A lot of Fujifilm cameras have that more retro vibe to it with, with dials and you know, knobs and all that is gone on the 100 here. It's got this gunmetal gray, uh, it's a magnesium alloy frame, gunmetal gray leather, gunmetal gray at the bottom. I love the color scheme to it all. Now, and also the magnesium alloy, great material, but it keeps it lightweight overall. Now, talking about the leather for a second, I didn't think, I didn't know it was wrapped in leather until I actually watched a video about this, and I was surprised. But I love the tactile feel, especially being in a humid climate here like in Singapore. You want something that is easy to grip. And a lot of the older, other Fujifilm cameras have this kind of vulcanite, kind of faux vulcanite look to it, and it's plastic but this feels really good in the hand. Now let's talk about this vertical grip for a second because everybody's talking about this vertical grip. People it's, are hating it, they're over dramatic on YouTube. Let me tell you something, it's not bad. It's easy to hold. Yes, it's thinner than the normal grip, but you've got to remember something about uh, medium format that a lot of people don't mention. The aspect ratio is different than full frame. So when you want to move to portrait mode or vertical mode, you're not, it's not a huge difference in terms of the aspect ratio as it would be on a full frame camera system. So for the most part, you're not going to use the vertical grip all that much. And if you do, it feels good in the hand. It doesn't slip out. It doesn't hurt my hand. It's, the people that talk about those things are very, I don't wanna say the drama queens, but yeah, the drama queens. It's fine, guys. And you got all the buttons and everything you need on there. You got the thumb uh, rest there. Everything is as it should be. And I like the design language that it goes gray, black, gray. I think it looks great. Now, talking about the top of the camera as well, we've got no dials, just a display, some, uh, some functionality buttons there as well. But let's talk about the buttons for a second because this is where I feel Fujifilm could have improved a little bit on the GFX100. The body feels great in the hand, but the buttons could be a little bit higher quality, a bit mushy at times, and not a deal breaker, but it's something that you do notice because the camera feels so robust. But talking to the top of the camera for a second, we've got this beautiful display, very reminiscent of the GFX 50S or Phase 1 camera. It has a multitude of different displays, so you can show all the numbers and information that you would normally have. Then you have the retro dials, or you can have a histogram. I just leave it as the default display because it has no issues at all. You can go from white background or black background, either or, very easy to read. And then also you have another display on the back of this. It's a touchscreen swivel display, articulating display. I think it's about 2.3 inches thereabouts if I'm wrong. I'm just talking from my head at this point in time because we're 
in a crowd. There is no teleprompter. Um, the display is great. Um, it's vibrant, colorful, shows everything that you need to show. But if you want to see, here's the tip. If you want to see how sharp your images are, you need to shoot JPEG and in RAW. If you only shoot in RAW, you don't get to see the full detail because actually what it does is uses the JPEG image to show you how crisp your image is. So keep that in mind. Anyway, it does articulate. Um, it's not a full swivel. Wish it was, but I don't think I'll be vlogging with the GFX 100 anytime soon. But if I was, yeah, I'd want that swivel display. But it is what it is. Um, no issues at all with that. And then also we have that sub display in the back, which is, um, it's cool. It shows you your battery information. It can show you different information because you can totally customize these displays to be what you want them to be. So I like it. Um, I don't notice it all the time, but it's nice to have. Anyway, that's it for the, the aspects of the outside of this camera. I'm gonna take the camera back from Kai Hong. His arm is tired and we're gonna talk about what it's like to use the GFX 100 in a situation like this, low light in Chinatown during Chinese New Year. Okay, so we switched cameras and I decided to sit down for this next bit because it's a lot of walking and it's hot and humid tonight. Anyway, let's talk about this camera, about the 102 megapixel sensor on this. Now, it's not a full size medium format sensor that you would find on a phase one or a Hasselblad H series, but it's sort of like I would say APS-C medium format sensor. It's still larger than full frame and you get a lot of information in your images and this has 16-bit uncompressed beautiful stunning 102 megapixel images out of this thing. And if you've never seen 102 megapixels, trust me, it happens to all of us when we first see it. Our jaws drop and we're like, wow. Okay, once you get past that, there's a lot more to this camera than just that awesome image that comes out of the sensor. You've got dynamic range, 16-bit files out of this. Once you can set it to compressed, uncompressed, 16-bit, 14-bit. You have so, so much play with your, your files that you can just, I mean, the highs, the lows, you can pull details from shadows that you were never, you were never able to do on a full-frame sensor before. And that's sort of the magic behind medium format. It's the tonality, it's all those things. It's not just the depth of field that you get with it, but it's just, it's the sum of many different parts. Now, when you, now I have to say this, when you do compress an image and you put it on social media, sometimes someone might not know that it's a medium format image. You will, but they might not know, but they'll say to you, well, that's a beautiful image. That's really something, it, there's something different about it but they can't tell you. Anyway, what's it like to use this camera? Well, we're gonna walk around Chinatown, and I'm gonna handheld, I'm gonna go shooting with a variety of different lenses. So let's get down to it. All right, so first let's talk about this newer lens for the GF lineup, it's the GF 53.5, or as they call it, the pancake lens. Now, it's one of the lightest medium format lenses on the market, it was, until Hasselblad released their 45 P1, but I gotta tell you, it's a great little street lens. Now, 50 millimeters for this medium format sensor is equivalent to about 35 millimeters for full frame. 3.5 is about a 2.8. So it's not a super fast lens, but it's good for this amount of lighting. Now, if you wanna go darker, I'd recommend obviously going to the 110 F2, which I have with me, and we'll talk about that in a second. But overall, the, the performance of this lens is really good. Actually, the first part of this video that we were shooting was shot with this lens, and it's quick, it's sharp, it's, uh, I don't see any sort of softening in the corners really per se. Um, high performing lens, I mean all the GF lenses are really good. Some are better than others, but this lens is really nice to use and because it's so lightweight, it's a joy to use on the GFX100. But I would say for you GF50R uh, fans out there, this is a great rangefinder uh, or medium format rangefinder lens to have on that as well. Great, great package. All right, so the next lens we have on the 100 is the 3264 F4. Now, this is, I guess you can say it's like a pseudo wide angle zoom, because 32 would be about 26, 24, 26 millimeters, and 64 would be about 50 millimeters. So it's kind of an interesting range, focal range on it, but it's an F4. So for lower light situations, I mean, obviously that'd be about close to about a 3.6. So not gonna be a lens that you're gonna to wanna to use at night for the most part. This is gonna be great for landscapes or 
scenery shots or outdoor shots, you're gonna really like this lens. Now, it's a lens I've actually used the least out of all the lenses I had with me. One is because I'm a prime user, I love using primes, but also, I find it to be very heavy. Um, now, obviously, wide angle zooms tend to be heavier than, you know, other zooms out there, but it does feel really top heavy on the GFX 100. Um, in terms of performance, though, it's not bad. Um, I find that the images are sharp. I mean, most images are sharp on this. I mean, when you're comparing lenses, it's not like one is really bad and one is really good. There's a consistency within the Fujifilm lineup for the uh, GFX system uh, that you find in all these lenses. It definitely resolves 100 megapixels, no issues at all. But if you can tell from our video uh, sample footage here, it's not the best for video if you want to track somebody walking and talking. You see that it goes in and out a little bit. Um, but that's for video. For photography's sake, it's great. It's easy to use. Um, the only downside is it's an F4 and it's a little bit heavy. I do hope that, um, you know, since Fujifilm has brought on a camera with IBIS and it's meant to be handheld and used in a variety of scenarios, if they start making a bit faster glass, this would be great at an F2.8, but I'm afraid if it was at a 2.8, I'd probably need an assistant to carry the lens with me while I'm carrying the camera, because this is pretty hefty. Whoops. Mike just felt, Mike just clipped off. Careful. Yeah. It's a long day. Whew, telling me, man. You know, one thing about doing camera reviews, you gotta carry all these lenses around. You know, maybe other productions, they got like people and trucks. Not us. Kai Hong and I were just two <laughs> lone men. That's the 110 F2, baby. That's the 110 F2. Not for the faint of heart. This is one of the most beautiful lenses you'll ever get a chance to shoot with. Trust me. If there's one lens to get with the GFX 100 or any GFX system, it's the 110 F2. And you'll know why when you see the images. It's not light. But if you want stunning image quality, it's about the equivalent to a, about a 100 millimeter F1.4. Otis level. I better take the lens hood off because a lot of people always complain to me, Bobby, why do you leave the lens hood on in your reviews backwards? It's because I don't have time. Let's talk about the 110 F2. 110 F2 is the dream lens of the GFX lineup. Now, I, t I, previously tested this t I previously tested this on the GFX 50R, which we had a review about. And I loved that lens then, and I love this lens now. And as you can tell, the bokeh on this lens, the separation, annihilates the background. It's like a 1.4 for full frame users out there. And it's fast. One ten F two, baby. If you can only get one lens, one ten F two, you will be so happy. Trust me. It's the best advice I can give you, and it's free because no one's paying us for these videos. But Fujifilm, if you're listening, and if you have an extra GFX one hundred lying around with the one ten F two, just put it up. Hey everyone, uh, we are not in Chinatown right now, obviously. Um, this is an add-on to the review that you're currently watching. And the reason that we're adding this on is because this always happens to us when we do camera reviews is that after we're done shooting the initial review, the company calls us up and they'll say, hey, we got a new product. Do you want to try it, try it out or add on to the review? So guys, we got our hands on the GF45100 OIS LMWR. How could we say no to this? You know, the, the kind folks at Fujifilm said, Bobby, do you want to try this lens out? It's not coming out to the end of February. I'm like, yeah, I want to try this out. Put it up to the other two zooms that we got here, the 3264 and the 100 and the 200, see how it performs. So here we are. 
Now, I've only been using this lens for a few days, and by the time you see this finished review, you will have a, pictures over a, a, about a week or so. But my initial impressions of this lens are, it's a fantastic zoom. This could be the one lens that you might use the majority of the time. And the reason being is that the focal length for full frame users out there is about equivalent to 36 to 80 millimeters. Now it's f4, so that f4 in medium format to full frame terms is about a 3.2. It's not a super fast lens, but in medium format, it's decent. And I gotta tell you, it's got optical image stabilization in this. It's got 16 elements, 12 groups. You've got three spherical elements, one super ED element, one ED element. All that means in layman's terms is, it's gonna reduce a lot of aberration. It's super sharp, great clarity. No matter what focal length you're at in the zoom, this lens performs admirably. It is really a stunning lens comes in at about a kilo in terms of weight. So it's not gonna be the lightest lens to carry around if you wanna do some tree photography, but it's the image quality, guys. This camera, it's all about the image quality. Now, there have been some discussions about how the OIS works with the in-body stabilization on the GFX100. So I've been messaging a Fuji rep. I'm gonna read from my WhatsApp message to give you the exact information. Now, if the lens has a three axis image stabilization, body will compensate with two axis. If lens has two axis, body will compensate with three axis. If the lens has no IS, body will compensate with a five axis image stabilization. So no matter where you're at, you're gonna get five axis image stabilization within the system, with OIS or without OIS. I gotta tell you, I took this out at night, you're near Marina Bay Sands, a Marina Barrage here in Singapore. I'm gonna show some photos in just a, a moment. I'm holding this with one hand because I'm walking my dog. You gotta, I gotta multitask. And I'm able to get steady shots with this at nighttime at F4. It just goes to show you. I don't know what sauce Fujifilm is putting into their IBIS and their OIS, but honestly speaking, and like I said before, we're not paid for this review. It's some of the best image stabilization I've seen in any camera system. It is so solid and so steady if you get any sort of shake, the only reason might be is because of shutter shake. That's it. But you go to EF, then you're gonna have no issues at all. This is really a stellar setup. Um, we're gonna show you some comparisons between the 100 to 200 and 3264 in terms of size. The 3264 will be a bit shorter, but it's very, very weighty. The 100 to 200 actually um, feels very similar to the 45 100, but honestly, folks, if you could have two lens in your kit if you're a travel photographer. 45, 100, and a 23, and you pretty much got all your bases covered unless you're doing some wildlife photography. This is a home run. Not the cheapest lens in the Fujifilm lineup, but you know what? It's image quality, baby. You gotta pay for the good image quality. And it delivers. So we're now to the final lens we have with us for the GFX100, and that is the 100-200 at 5.6 with OIS. Now, this is a... I mean, this is gonna be great for a lot of sports photographers out there, uh, certain wildlife photography. Um, now, it's not the fastest lens at f5.6, which is about 4.5 thereabouts, if you're converting it to full frame, and the focal length would be about 90 to 180 thereabouts. I don't have a calculator with me, so if you guys wanna correct me in the comment section below, you can do that. But um, it's a great lens. I really enjoy this, and I've shot a number of uh, different um, subjects from basketball. That's a bus, you didn't see it. Um, from basketball, from my friends playing basketball to just being around Chinatown. And, but the great thing about this with the image stabilization in the body and the OIS and the lens, I'm one over 10 with a sharp shot using a 200 focal length. Seriously, Fujifilm. I don't know what you guys have done with your IBIS and your OIS, but it's, it's, it's amazing, man. It's really amazing. I mean, I'm in nighttime, I'm still able to get shots just because of how steady this lens is paired with the body. Now, in terms of weight, in some ways, it's obviously not as girthy as the 3264, and but it feels like a 70 to 200 for the most part from if you used any sort of 70 to 200 from Nikon or Canon or Panasonic. 
So it doesn't really feel that foreign to you. And obviously I know a Fujifilm does make a 250 uh, lens, which is really long. You also can put a teleconverter on this and extend it. But remember at 5.6, you're really gonna have to boost your ISO up at night to get those, you know, those brighter shots. And especially with a teleconverter, I wouldn't take it out at nighttime. But it's a very impressive lens. Optics are fantastic. It's a sharp lens. And um, depending on the type of photography you are, this could be one for the arsenal. It's been a long night for us. Uh, I need to take a seat for this one just to kind of give you my final thoughts on the GFX100 after using it for the past few weeks. Um, it's a camera system that, I mean, it was my most innovative camera of the year in 2019, and rightfully so. It just, there's so many things this camera does that three weeks is, is not enough time with it, to be honest with you. And a lot of reviews that you might have watched out there, maybe had it for a week or two. I think a couple of reviewers that I've watched as well have had it for a, like longer than that. And they're very, they're more in depth than this one, but this camera is capable of so much that we've never thought possible with medium format. And take away the 100 megapixel aspect of that for a moment, but just the sensor size and what medium format cameras were just a couple years ago. Yeah, they were smaller with the GFX 50S and the 50R and the X1D, but they never had this technology that felt like a full frame camera system, and now you have that. IBIS, which is phenomenal, packed on with the OIS that's in this 100 200 lens. I mean, come on. One over 10 at a 200 focal length, sharp. You don't get that with medium format, guys. You really don't. This camera is not meant to be in the studio. Yeah, you can use it. It's not meant to just shoot landscapes. It's meant to be on the streets. Now, of course, any person that sees me walking around with this setup is gonna be like, whoa, hold on. I mean, it's not the most discreet thing on the market, but it's medium format. Now, a couple things that I would say I wanna bring up that aren't necessarily issues that are gonna be deal breakers, but things you should be aware of. Low light performance. ISO over 6400 is gonna to be tough to use if you really want a very pin sharp image. If you want something that's for social media or a webpage, it's more than inadequate. But if you really want that 100 ISO pin sharp image, it's not gonna be there for you. The grip, the grip is good, but it's a little shallow for my hands and I have larger hands. It's not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination, but I would have liked a little bit more bulkier of a grip, especially with the size of this camera. Um, besides that, I mean, battery life, battery life is great. It says rated 800 shots. You can get more than that. Fujifilm is being conservative. It's a great camera. I've got new issues with this. I actually want to, I mean, I don't know if Fujifilm will let me, but I want to hold on to this a little bit longer and give you a more in-depth review as the months go on. But it's an expensive camera, so I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, if you have the means, don't listen to other people say, oh, you don't need 100 megapixels. Get it. You're going to love this camera system. And when you look at the images, everyone's going to go, wow. Simple as that. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the GFX100 system. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. Until the next one, take care.